dear students we are back to the class we have been discussing in the previous interaction about the transition curves where the transition curves have to be provided between the compound curves and the reverse curves we calculated the length of the transition curve in those scenarios and then we had a discussion on the gradients that means we started with the vertical alignment and we talked about the ruling gradient limiting gradient and the exceptional gradient and then what are going to be the values of these particular gradients in the case of different type of road conditions or road categorizations. Towards the end, we talked about that once these gradients are being provided, then wherever there is a change in the direction, at that particular tip, instead of providing a kink, which may cause a jerk to the vehicle, they should be smoothened out and that is where there is a requirement of providing a vertical curve at that location. In that direction, in today's interaction, we are going to talk about the vertical curves and we will see that what are the general guidelines for the provision of vertical curves, what are going to be the lengths related to the vertical curves at a minimum level needs to be provided. And then we will go into the categorization of those vertical curves. And as a categorization, we have two curves like summit curves and valley curves and we will be starting with the summit curves in that form. So, let us first of all talk about uh, in general that what are these vertical curves required for and what are the general guidelines related to them. So, we can discuss the need that why these vertical curves needs to be provided. The very first thing is the gradual transition at a point of deviation. What it means is that you have provided a grade line 1 and then there is a grade line 2. So, at this point there is going to be a changeover and this changeover has to be made in a smooth form and that is what we are doing by way of the provision of a vertical curve. And when you do this, then this particular kink has got eliminated. So, there is an elimination of kink or there is an elimination of troughs. So, when you are doing this type of a connectivity. Maintaining visibility along the section throughout the safe distance that is another issue because if you have this type of a thing and the vehicle is moving in this direction like this. So, and then this visibility is going to be with respect to the tangential line along this particular curvature and you have an idea that what is there on the other side. But if this kink is there then this visibility is going to be hampered and you have very less distance which is available to the driver to see and visualize that if there is any hazardous situation whether there is a reaction to be made to that. And of course, when we do this, when we this there is a smooth transition from one side to the another side, it improves in the comfort level of the pedestrians as well as the comfort of driving the vehicle on this particular location. So, these are the different needs why we should go for provision of a vertical curve. Now, what are the general guidelines related to the provision? Let us look at those. The very first thing it says, the vertical alignment should provide for a smooth longitudinal profile consistent with category of road and the type of uh, terrain which is there. Then the grade change should not be too frequent as to cause kinks and visual discontinuities in the profile and there should not be a change in the gradient within a distance of 75 meters in fountain terrain and 150 meters in plain terrain. So, what it tries to say is, is that as far as possible let us have as smooth the things as being provided. So, the longitudinal profile should look quite smooth or we should not think of something like this. So, a curve is going this way or a curve is going this way or a curve is going this way. So, so many curves have been provided one after the other and they are going to create a sort of a kink or the distortion in the perception of the driver when they look on that particular alignment. And there is always a possibility that it may also create a visual discontinuity and the driver may become alarmed that uh, there is uh, some road is going to close there or stop at a certain point. Even if there is a requirement of doing this type of uh, continuous type of uh, changeover, then there is that is where it says that there should not be a change in the gradient within a distance of 75 meters in mountainous terrain and 150 meters in plain terrain. Then the next case is uh, related with the broken back grade lines. Now, we talked about this in the case of horizontal curve also. 
Now, what is this broken back great line is two vertical curves in the same direction. So, maybe because of uh, the reasons like this, so you are providing a curve here and then you are providing another curve here. So, this is what is a broken back great lines. As far as possible, we should try to omit these type of situations. The reasons remains the same. The reasons remains is that there is a frequent change over from one to another and then the third type of a gradient which is quite uncomfortable for driving. At the same time, if you look at in terms of any aesthetics, then the appearance is going to be bad. And it is always better that if possible, let us try to make it one single vertical curve. But there may be possibilities that this is uh, not going to happen. Then in those cases, we have to see that whether the provision of some other straight sections in between the two curves needs to be taken care of. A short valley curve within otherwise continuous profile is undesirable. So, you have a continuous profile going on like this and then a small curve is being provided and then again you have a profile which is going say here or you have a curve which is being provided small like this and then we go up. So, in any of these cases, if there is a possibility that we can omit such type of a things, then that is going to be good in terms of the perspective views and in terms of the situations that the hazardous locations are going to be there, they may cause a safety impact in this case. Then as because we are talking about uh, mountainous terrain or we are talking about uh, steep terrain, there is always a possibility of having the cross drainage structures. So, there may be small culverts which may be pipe culverts, box culverts, anything like that or minor bridges can be there because wherever the this type of a valley situation is there and your road is passing through this location, there is always a possibility of the water flowing through it and we have to take care of that. So, if you are talking about this, then what it says is that, that the DAC should follow the same profile as the flanking road section. So, whatever is the road section is having on the basis of that, we should try to provide the decks also and there should not be any break in the grid lines. So, we can do that we are going continuously like that and after that we are going to make a change or it may happen that we are not going to provide us something in this form. So, if there is a not a big gradient, then it is fine, but if it is a big gradient, then we have to take care of. So, we have to see that how this particular thing can be managed in the terrain. For a small bridges up to 30 meters span and having horizontal deck, it would be preferable to combine the flanking sections into a single vertical curve. So, that is again. So, the point remains the same. Wherever you can ease out the situations, kindly try to ease out the situation. If you can make it a single curve, it is always good. If it is not possible, then you have to find out the way outs of making it is smoother, comfortable for driving and steering. The degree of curvature should be in proper balance with the gradients. So, you are providing the gradient and you are providing the curvature. So, gradient is very less, but the curvature is very high. Now, this is going to create a problem. So, that sort of a balancing has to be done. Even in the case of a steeper one, if you make it a, again a steeper situation towards the other side is also going to create a problem. So, a straight alignment or flat horizontal curves at the expense of a steep or long grades or excessive curvature in the road with flat grades, any of these type of combinations, they are not the balanced designs and we should try to remove these type of things if they are going to happen in the alignment. If they are already there in the alignment which has been constructed many years back because of some reasons, now we can ease it out if we are trying to make it better. The overall appearance of a highway can be enhanced considerably by the judicious combination of the horizontal and vertical alignments. This is of course a requirement because when you are going into vertical terrain and you are continuously going up and up, there is always a possibility that you have to take a change in a direction is required because now you have to go to some other direction. So, it means you have a horizontal alignment as well as a vertical alignment at that location and if that is happening then the coordination between the two needs to be done and that is what it talks about a combination and we are going to talk about these coordinations uh, towards the end. The plan and profile of the road should not be designed independently but in unison so as to produce an appropriate three-dimensional effect and how it is being done, what happens if there is a 
problem in one alignment versus another one that we will look at when we will take up the coordination. The proper coordination in this respect will ensure safety, improve utility of the highway and contributes to the overall aesthetics. The vertical curvature of roads should be bold in design and long easy curves should take in all minor changes in the ground levels. As far as possible numerous changes which are going to be there in the gradients, they should not be done, they should be tried to make it combined together and then we can come up with a one single curve, otherwise there are going to be too many short vertical curves and these needs to be avoided, again the reasons remains the same. Now, in the case of uh, mountainous terrain where the adoption of long and easy curves becomes uh, costly, then you can have some short sections, but in those short sections also you need to uh, try to make it as easy as possible, maybe like if they are going to be n number of uh, such ups and downs and causing the vertical curves, we can combine few together and the others are being left as individual. The economic aspect of the vehicle operation is also important in this because you are going up, so there is a resistance, the grade resistance is going to work and if you are going to provide a sort of limiting gradients and exceptional gradients and this is further enhanced. So there is a greater consumption of fuel, there is a heavy wear and tear on tires and brakes of the vehicles when they are traversing all these wide range of uh, vertical curves along those great lines which are creating either the rise or the fall in the terrain and which we need to see that if there is a possibility if we can make it ease out in that direction also it is going to be good. The vertical curvature superimposed upon horizontal curvature gives a pleasing effect and this again we are going to repeat as I said we will talk about the coordination. As says the vertical horizontal curves should coincide as far as possible and their length should be more or less equal but if it is not possible then the horizontal curve should be longer than the vertical curve. So there are few these guidelines which are there when you are trying to work with the two types of alignments together. Sharp horizontal curves should be avoided at or near the apex of the pronounced summit or vertical curves from safety considerations. These are other things and it is desirable that the deck or the top level of curvers should be fixed in line with the grade line. We talked about this previously. So it is uh, just a repetition of that. And uh, if there is uh, an existing road where the culverts are there and the deck levels are higher than the general road levels, then the height of hump uh, that should not create an obstruction to the line of sight, that is another thing. And uh, if there is an obstruction then in all of those cases we have to ease out the situation on either of the sides, so approaches has to be uh, made in that form and that is how a smooth curve can be provided. And this is smooth curve as I said previously can be anything like a summit or vertical or sorry valley curve depending on the grade lines that in which particular direction they are moving. So when we are looking at these uh, uh, type of things then there are again certain absolute minimum or the minimum values which needs to be taken care of. So here it talks about the minimum grade change and the length. So for the given design speeds which are changing from 20 kilometers per hour to 100 kilometers per hour. The first column says that it is a maximum grade change in percent not requiring a vertical curve. So you are changing from 3 percent grade to say 2.5 percent grade. So the changeover is going to be how much 0.5 percent maybe. So if that sort of things are happening, so we have to see whether in those conditions for a given design speed, whether there is a requirement of providing a vertical curve or not. So they are being defined and what it says is that at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, if this maximum grade change which is there is 0.5 percent, then up to this particular point there is no requirement of providing a vertical curve, but if the values go beyond this then we have to provide and we have to design a vertical curve. But as said previously that if you are not providing the curves then it is going to create a kink at that location and we have to omit that kink. So what it defines is that even in such conditions a minimum length can be provided as a vertical curve and this vertical curve can be anything, this can be summit curve or this can be valley curve. So at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour or a 30 kilometers per hour this length is 15 meters but if you talk about 100 kilometers per hour 
then this is 60 meters in length which needs to be provided as a minimum vertical curve. In the case of expressways then what are the values? So, expressways we have three categories of the design speeds. So, we have 80, 100 and 120 kilometers per hour. Here it is defined as minimum grade change requiring a vertical curve in person just in our form. So, as soon as the grade change has gone to 0.5 percent or it has gone to 0.6 percent in the case of 80 kilometers per hour design speed, then in that case we have to provide a curve or otherwise if there is a no requirement of providing a curve, then also there is a minimum length of the vertical curve and this minimum length varies from 70 meters to 100 meters for a design speed of 80 kilometers per hour and 120 kilometers per hour respectively. So, these uh, are the things which you have to take care of when you are trying to calculate the length of the vertical curve and if you found that certain value has come, then check it with the minimum requirements which are otherwise there. And even in the case of these values of the grade changes, then if you found that uh, it is not applicable, then also you have to go back and see that what minimum value has to be provided as a length. Now, let us come to the first type of uh, curve which is a summit curve. Now, what can be the various orientations of the great lines which can be considered for the provision of this summit curve. Now, if we look at A, what it shows is that there is an up gradient and there is another up gradient being provided, but the another up gradient is having a lesser value as compared to the previous one and that constitutes a condition where a summit curve is going to be there. If we talk about the case 2 that is B, then again we have a up gradient and it is followed by a flat condition that means the gradient is 0 here. Even in this case, the curve which is going to be provided is a summit curve. If we look at another case where there is an up gradient and it is being followed by a down gradient, then in this case also when you try to connect them by a smooth curve, then it is going to constitute a summit curve. The other case can be then you have a down gradient which is again followed by a down gradient and you again have a summit curve. There can be another possibility that we talk about that there is a flat gradient. So, where have n 1 is equals to 0 and there is a this n 2 which is negative and therefore, a curve is going to be there on this side and that is again constitutes summit curve. Now, in all of these cases, what you can see is that there is a capital value of n which I also defined previously is a changeover from one gradient to another gradient and the value of this n is calculated as the first gradient which is n 1 with its sign minus the second gradient with its sign and this is capital N being defined. So, we can calculate this say we are talking about the first case A where it is plus N 1 minus and then plus N 2. So, it is N 1 minus N 2 and that is the value of capital N. So, if we are talking about D it is minus N 1 minus minus N 2 and therefore, it is N 2 minus N 1 as capital N. So, this is how we can calculate the values for this capital N. Now, when we are talking about this summit curve, when we are saying that we are going in this form and the curve has been provided. Now, is there any problem here when this curve is being provided when a vehicle is negotiating at the top of this? Now, when the vehicle is moving on this particular curve, the very first thing which we have to see is that this is the eye level and at this eye level, the person is going to visualize the things along this curvature and say there is an object here. So, eye level is 1.2 meters, object is 0.15 meters. So, this is line of sight. 
So, when you are talking about this, this is what is being discussed here. The main problem of the summit curve is of visibility due to the curvature. The minimum visibility shall be equals to SST. So, the means to say is that if this particular distance is being talked, then this should be at least SST. And the height are being taken as 1.2 meters for eye level and 0.15 meters for the object and they of course are being taken above the pavement surface. But if you are talking about the provision of OSD which needs to be maintained on this summit curve, then these values are going to change to 1.2 meters each. Now, if this vehicle is negotiating this curve, then what is going to happen in terms of the forces which are acting? Say this is a curve, the centrifugal force is going to act upwards when the vehicle comes at this location. then the weight is going to act in the downward direction. So, when it the vehicle negotiates is the weight of the vehicle and the centrifugal force they become opposite to each other. And when they become opposite to each other it means the effect of the weight of the vehicle which is going to be in the downward direction reduces and if it reduces then the forces which are going to be there on the suspension system, they are also going to be lesser and that is where the problem of discomfort to the drivers or the to the passengers is going to be lesser. So, when you talk about this type of a summit curve, then this summit curve can be parabolic or circular in shape. So, so these are the diagrams which are trying to tell you again the same thing. So, we have a line of sight, the eye level, the object level and the safe stopping sight distance which needs to be maintained between the two. If this is not available, then we have to ease out the things or otherwise we have to restrict the speeds on this particular section so that the lesser SSD is required and that is maintainable on that section. This is one thing. Now, the another thing is that the curve which we are going to provide as we said that it can be parabolic in nature or circular curve. So, it tries to show that here. So, the total length of the curve which we are going to talk. So, we have this length of the word well uh, of the summit curve which needs to be calculated and there is a upward gradient which is being followed by a downward gradient and because of this reason the deviation angle is going to be n1 plus n2. So, once we have these values we can always find it out and these n's are actually 1 in n1 and this is 1 in n2 form or they can be in percent forms also. Uh, we have discussed about it that, that the grades or the grade lines can be defined in different forms. So, when we are talking about a vehicle which is there which is having a, a line of sight at this level. So, the height is from the top of uh, the pavement is say 1.2 meters and when the person is looking here. So, there is a height of an object on the other side. So, we have to calculate these values here. So, when we are going with the uh, say the parabolic type. So, y is equals to a x square is usually the formula which we may be talking here. So, if we resolve the things by using the y and x when you are moving outwards and downwards, then the factor a comes out to be as n divided by 2 l and the y becomes n x square divided by 2 l and the radius of the curve becomes l divided by n. So, we have the value of n depending on what type of gradients are given. So, once the length has been calculated then the radius is also going to be found out. Now, in the case of summit curves also the broken back profiles should be avoided and approaches to bridges with width less than 30 meters should be designed to fit as a single vertical curve. So, if it is more than that then maybe we have to look at alternate measures. Now, let us look at the length of the summit curve. Now, the length of the summit curve here, it is being calculated as I said mostly for SSD but it can also be calculated for OSD conditions. And uh, if you are talking about OSD conditions, obviously it is going to be quite high because if you talk about SSD at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, it is something like 180 meters only. But if you talk about the, the OSD at 100 kilometers per hour, it is roughly around 640 meters. So, there is a big change and accordingly the lands are also going to be quite long. So, mostly we try to provide SSD which is minimum which needs to be ensured, but otherwise we can do for OSD also. Then how we are going to do it and on the basis of uh, the diagram which we have looked at the back, uh, we can find out the equations. 
Now, there can be two cases. One is that the length of the curve is greater than SST. So, if that is a situation, then what is going to be there? So, it is L is n into S square, where S is the SSD value divided by the square of uh, a combination of factors, which is 2 H capital under root of that and 2 H, where H is a small under root of that and we are taking a summation of it. Now, if we put the value of H as 1.2 meters and this H as 0.15 meters, then what factor we are going to get is 4.4. So, our formula reduces to Ns square divided by 4.4. There is another condition which is when L is less than SSD and in this case it is 2S minus this factor and now it transforms into 2S minus 4.4 divided by N. So, what you can see is that you need two values, one is n and another one is s, so as to calculate the length of the summit curve. Now, when you are calculating the values using these two equations, there may be a situation that none of these are satisfied. Now, suppose it is being satisfied, then we say it is ok and we are going to consider this length l. But say if it is not ok, then we go to the another condition and we see that ok this is satisfied now you are getting a length which is less than ssd is fine but if it is not ok then what then in this case we have to go to see that what is the minimum length to be provided so here you can see that the change of a gradient so, whatever that minimum change is there, what is the speed for which it is being designed, now this is going to be worked. So, this is how the overall procedure should be adopted. Similarly, there is another case where we have an OSD, but the only thing which is going to change here is that this H or this H, they both becomes 1.2 meters and on the basis of that, if you have a length consider greater than OSD, then the formula becomes Ns square divided by 9.6 where if the length is less than OSD, then the formula becomes 2s minus 9.6 divided by n, where n is the difference in the slopes and that difference in the slopes has to be looked at with respect to the arithmetic values of those gradients which are there. So, you have a first gradient and the following gradient may or may not be transforming into this, you have to find it out though. So, you have to take the signs into consideration when you are trying to find out this value. So, when you have an upgrade followed by a downgrade, it means it is plus n1 minus minus n2, that is a sign which is defining and this is defining up and this is defining down. So, based on that what we get is n1 plus n2. So, we may close here this interaction and we will be continue to see that how this length is being provided, what is the calc values which are going to be there on the basis of maybe some examples being taken. And accordingly, we will see that what are the minimum lengths they provided or what are the various curves which needs to be provided and on the basis of those curves also directly the values can be deduced if you have the value of n etc in hand and uh, that is how we will be trying to complete the summit curves in the next interaction. Till then, thank you and bye.